On the weekend, I bought a full set, and when I say full, a full set of Ping Graphite irons for £20. That's £2 a club. So why do I think it could have been a mistake? which is just a weakening point. And if you've got quite a steep, aggressive swing into the ground, well, sadly, they're not gonna last that long. Guys, how you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video. Simon down here at Sanford Springs Golf Club, and we're gonna talk about that outrageous deal I got on these ping irons, but at the same time, how this deal could cost you more money than you first initially got them for, because this would be ideal for a beginner getting into the game. They're graphite, they're chunky, they're big, there's a lot of them, and they're cheap. If you like this video, leave it a like, subscribe if you are new. I appreciate all the feedback on one of my recent videos where I did a bit more of a voiceover course vlog, so we're gonna mix it up a bit. So if you do like this format, please leave it a like. Um, leave me some suggestions below as I always want to improve the format and content of this channel. And yeah, let's get straight into it. Right, I'm gonna show you the listing here on the right hand side, 20 pounds, ping golf irons. You can't go wrong, and I didn't actually realize how many irons came with this deal. So I was pleasantly surprise but on closer inspection i could see how this could lead to extra costs for a beginner golfer not necessarily realizing um, and these clubs are new on 20 years old they look fantastic for 20 years old i do feel like ping were very much ahead of their time um, in terms of creating that kind of forgiveness moi um, uh, lightweight graphite shafted you name it so in terms of the clubs themselves extremely undervalued but these clubs could easily be worth another 100 120 pounds if the condition was better the graphite which i'll show you is a problem with older clubs the grips if you can call them that that is generous uh, in a poor condition and again not necessarily going to be helping any golfer that's just starting this game as well as well the slots out the back of them and as we've seen with more modern day equipment especially the newer stuff the more plastic the more inserts everything else that they put in the back of them the more likely that club it's a deteriorate. So boys and girls, here they are in all their glory. Cleaned them up last night. We've already played about seven holes with them, which I'm gonna show you um, the footage from and obviously do the voiceover in a second. But I just wanna highlight a few points. Now, 20 pounds granted, you're never really going to go wrong. Two pound a stick, that is an outrageous deal. But again, you could look at this and I can see a beginner looking at this going, ping, graphite, 10 clubs you could look at this on the face of it and go 60 pounds is an absolute steal 70 pounds is an absolute steal and here are the three things i want you guys to look out for before you jump the gun and go and get say your first or second um uh, iron set or wood set for that matter but especially irons um uh, and especially when they're graphite and this in particular is what i'm talking about especially the lower end of the bag now without any surprise the three five and four which is essentially pretty much all the value in this set are flawless and again the reason being is because a beginner that would normally have this set and the reason we probably don't see this anymore is that these are extremely hard clubs to hit even though you obviously they are more higher launching but again a rescue a five wood that kind of deal is going to give you more forgiveness launch and um, help in that matter so in terms of bag wear marks on the top end and as well as the grips coincidentally they haven't even been changed but even though these are probably 20 years old they look like they've just come out the factory it's a different story at the lower end of the bag. So the wedge, the sand wedge, um, the gap wedge, for example, again, you can see with the graphite, and there can be problems with steel as well, like pitting and stuff like that, it's weakened. So I've taken them out today because I wanted to give them a full hit before I move them on. This is gonna be a part of the Builder Bag series. Um, uh, we're about 1,100 pounds at the moment. So we're building the total slowly, but I'm more interested in getting a 2022 set built now. Um, so I know a few of you want updates, but it's gonna take a bit more time. It's not like I can just go out and grab a deal um, and just keep increasing the total. I want to actually start putting stuff in the bag now. So before I want to sell this on, move it on, auction it off, I do have to test that it is pretty much working condition. But it's tough to tell because again, you can see 
with these kind of inserts, especially ping ones. Now they're very good at replacing them, but it is a faff and you do have to send them off. But you can see nine, seven, I believe the gap wedge at the bottom here, the eight iron, all of them are missing the inserts at the back, which is going to affect its performance, which is going to affect, again, its swing weighting. And for a beginner golfer, not necessarily a massive, massive issue. But it's another thing that to look out from, especially the more modern day clubs, like, for example, my PSI irons that I've had recently. Any rubber, um, any insert that's glued in like these, can tend to fall out. And yes, some of them have still got them in, especially the top end of the bag, but how long is that going to last? So it's something, and so it's one of these questions you want to ask before potentially going and getting a great deal, because I wouldn't want you to go and get this set for 70 pounds, thinking that it's gonna be great, more inserts fall out, and then lo and behold, the shaft starts snapping, because as you can see, the graphite's been worn away over time, which is just a weakening point. And if you've got quite a steep, aggressive swing into the ground, well, sadly, they're not gonna last that long. And then my last point, which is the most expensive point and a question to really ask, and it is difficult because if you're getting a good deal on eBay, Facebook, whatever it might be, you don't wanna ask too many questions because the person's probably not gonna bother or to get a better offer, but grips is a big one. These are very warm very shiny some beginners that start this game you grip the club for dear life as it already is so you don't want any more excuses to grip them even harder and sadly with this lovely 10 club selection if you were to get the cheapest set of grips at your pro shop and put them on for you you're looking at seven pounds a grip realistically for a tour velvet probably about nine pounds now um, knowing the way the economy works so you're looking at probably double the amount that you're paying for the irons just to get them re-gripped. And it is something to bear in mind. 20 pounds, let's be honest, we spend more on a dozen set of golf balls. But if you're going to jump the gun and go and get a good deal for yourself on irons, the three things I would really look out for is shaft condition, graphite, is it bag wear marks? Steel, is it got pitting? The inserts, do they have inserts? Have they got all the inserts? Because that can show a sign that the rest probably will go. And last but not least, the more costly effect, the grips on the bottom of them. Will they need replaced? And if so, is it worth really getting the irons in the first place? So let's get into the commentary format where I talk about the clubs behind me as well as what I'm working on in my swing uh, and give you a few pointers on what I'm trying to think about when I'm trying to change my swing on the golf course. So not necessarily change it, but work on my technique whilst playing because it can get frustrating if you're always dicing between technique and results. So I will talk a bit about the irons. As I said at the start of this um, uh, video, the ping irons, especially back in the day when they were big, forgiving, chunky, you name it, they were still producing good clubs, like stuff that really competes with today. Now, the condition, as I said, isn't great. And you're going to cost yourself a fortune if you need to regrip these or reshaft them or try and fix the um, uh, slots at the back. But to be honest, I didn't even notice when I was playing this round. Now, these are big, chunky clubs there's no question there's like very shallow bunker here not that much sand um downwind down slow but i'm trying to get this sandwich underneath it it's just never happening so these are ultimate beginning irons but most people with these clubs would just be happy to get out of the bunker just like i did there and that's what they're designed for they're looking for maximum forgiveness not necessarily maximum control and i was happy with the way i played with this um, and the clubs around here and the reason being is I wasn't result orientated. And I do talk to my lessons a lot about this result orientated and technical um, orientated or what you should be focusing on the golf course. Now, in competition, playing with your mates, out on holiday, result orientated is the state to be. I got absolutely robbed, by the way, on this chip. I thought I hit that perfectly. Downwind, downhill, stunned it into the bank and they expected it to be about three foot from the flag. Looked over the brow and it was nowhere near. But you can't be both when you're playing this game. You have a lesson, you watch a YouTube video, whatever it might be, and you go to the range and you practice for 20, 30 minutes and you hit some good shots and then you go on the golf course expecting to hit 100% fades if that's what you're working for or you're trying to hit punch shots or you're trying to get more connected. Whatever you're trying to think about or change in your swing is a conscious thought. And as soon as you add the conscious thought process into golf, guess what? You're going to play bad golf because you're not letting your body take over. You're not letting your subconscious take over. And it's exactly the same as learning to drive a car. When we all start driving a car, we're thinking about our brake and our clutch and 
mirrors, whatever it might be. And you're a horrendous driver. Whereas a lot of us now probably can't even remember how we get to the destination because it's just all in the background. You're just focusing on the car in front. You're focusing on where you're going. You're focusing on when you're coming off. You're not worrying about the process. And that's how you can play good golf. You need to flood your body with technical practice. So that can be at the range. It can be pre-shot to routine. That can be in the net. And it could be on rounds like this with your mates if they're close to you or by yourself. And you work on that out to in or into out. I've got a massive draw at the moment. You watch any of my videos over the last month, heavily into out. So this whole round, I was working on trying to hit a fade. And even then you can see, I've been playing this game for a very long time. I struggled to hit fades in a majority of places. It's just uncommon for me at the moment because I'm trying to gain distance. But I don't care about the result. I even fatted this shot here, which I don't think I fatted an iron shot in the last year. And if I tried to hit a draw down this, guess what? It would have been fine and I probably would have been on the green. And if it was in a competition, I'd be happy with that. But I know long term for increase in ball speed, so the ball doesn't slide all over the place. And also accuracy, I need to sort my swing path out. So I'm not emotional when I go on the golf course and I shoot three over, four over, five over, 10 over. Because at the moment, we're breaking eggs. We need to get rid of the technique. And the trick to this game is training your conscious thoughts to become subconscious. So hopefully when you guys watch me go and play in a month, two months, I absolutely rip the ball. All I'm worried about is the target, wind direction, what club, and I hit a fade or I hit it straight or I hit a small draw. At the moment, my swing path is way too into out, but I'm not going to let the results over the next month, two months affect me because if anything, that's just going to hold me back and I'll go, oh, you know what? I just want to score well. So I hit this big high draw and ultimately that won't help my game. I hope that all makes sense, guys. Any questions, put them down below. So guys, there you have it. Thank you ever so much for watching. The three, four and five out of that set was worth the deal anyway for 20 pounds. And they're actually in really good condition considering the age, I mean, 20 years old uh, and what they still do and produce um, uh, is still great value for money in terms of performance, forgiveness versus price point. If you like this video, please leave it a like. Subscribe if you are new. Catch you guys later.